It's so annoying when you break a string like that just when you're trying to get a take, but I think the last take was probably fine. Anyway, in this video, I wanted to round out this series of blues-based videos I've been making by bringing it all together and making the type of video I wish I'd seen about 25 years ago. So what I'm gonna do is 12 bars and 12 different techniques. So by the end of it, not only will you have a full 12 bar blues you can play through, but 12 different techniques that you can use in loads of different ways. So let's get into it. So technique number one is the classic 1-4 blues rhythm pattern. So all that's going on here is I'm barring at the 5th fret with my 1st finger on the D, G and B strings and then at the 6th fret with my 2nd finger only on the G string a little hammer on. So this creates an A7, the 1 chord, with this little movement from the minor 3rd to the major 3rd which is a classic part of the blues sound. And then what I do is bar here at the 7th fret those same three strings, which is really a D chord, so the four chord, and so we alternate between the one chord with that hammer on and up to the four chord. Now you can play this with lots of different rhythms, add some ghost notes in like I'm doing there, and also I'm just starting off the piece with this little pick up here, ninth fret on the A, seven on the D, back to nine on the A, just to lead me into it. For technique number two, let's look at playing some thirds and let's start here. Nine on the G and eight on the B and slide into those two notes together. And this is a minor third with this G natural on the top, which really spells out that A7 sound. So play those three times and then down to the seventh fret on the G and B strings together. So this is like we're passing through a partial D chord and then down to the fifth fret and there we need to play this same little hammer on again from the minor to the major third. And you'll keep seeing that throughout this piece. And then I'm just ending here, seventh fret on the D string, which is our root note of A. One thing I should add, we're in the key of A here. So all of these licks, just think about how they relate to the A chord at the fifth fret and you'll be able to move them around the neck for other keys. On to technique three then, and let's look at using the minor blue note, which comes from the A minor blue scale. So when you're playing your normal A minor pentatonic box, like here, five, seven, five, seven on the D and G strings, that shape that everyone uses, you just step outside of that on the G string up to the eighth fret and that's your minor blue note. But the way I'm gonna use it here is not to linger on it, but just to flick off it. So flick off it twice from eight to seven, a little slide down. And then I'm just gonna play five on the G, seven on the D, and then five to six, that same minor to major bit, and then seven on the A. Then for technique four, let's look at how we can flick off the major blue note. So the major blue note is the minor third of our A scale. So that'll be a C natural here. And all I'm gonna do is approach from the note below this B at the fourth fret of the G string, slide onto it and quickly back off again. And then seven on the D string, four on the D string, seven on the D string. So we get that blue note sound, but it's not quite as dark as the minor blue note. So altogether, the minor blue note, the major blue note. So that's the first four bars over the A chord. Let's hear it with the track before we go on up to the D. to number five and let's look at some chromatic chords. So in blues you can approach pretty much any chord from a half step above by playing the same chord one fret higher and then just shifting it down to hit the chord we're aiming for. So now I'm aiming for a D but I'm playing an E flat first and then coming down one fret to hit the D. But the rule is you can't just use bog standard chords like this 
because that sounds rubbish. You need something slightly more sophisticated. So the chord I'm playing here, second finger on the fifth fret of the A string, first finger, fourth fret of the D string, and then third finger, I'm going to bar all of the top three strings on the fifth fret. So that's my D7 chord. It's a D7 add nine. And then all I want to do is play all that one fret higher and then land down onto the D on the first beat of the bar. Technique number six is going to be string bending. Now there's loads of different bends you can do, so let's look at some of the most common. Starting here, seventh fret of the G string, we can bend this note up a full step. And what I'm going to do is bend it up and then hit five on the B and five on the high E. And this is a really classic blues technique. Then I go straight into our next bend, eighth fret of the B string, a full bend up. So this goes from a G to an A, the seventh to the root of our A scale. So we've got, and then, so I'm playing a bend here, seventh fret of the high E, just a couple of little half bends up. So this goes from the B up to the C. Now bear in mind at the moment we're playing over the D7 chord. So bending up to this C note here, that's the seventh of this D7 chord. So it really brings out that dominant seventh sound again. Then lastly, up to the eighth fret on the high E, and I'm just gonna play a microtonal bend like this. Now a microtonal bend, we're not actually aiming for another note, we're just pushing the note slightly sharp. Now this is a really common thing to do whenever you play the minor third in blues. So we get it here. You also get it with this minor third here at the fifth fret on the G string. Classic blues sound. So altogether, these bends sound like this. So let's hear everything we're playing over this D chord with the track. On to technique seven, and let's look at some sliding fourths. So a fourth we get when we play the same fret on the B and high E strings together. So I'm gonna start here at the fifth fret, and then slide straight up to the seventh. And then quickly up to the eighth, and back again, and down to the fifth again. The rhythm's really important here, just listen. Now this is quite tricky at first, but keep practicing and you will get it. I just play a little pickup lick in front of that. So five to six on the G and then five to seven on the B. Then more double stops for technique number eight, but this time we're gonna be playing in sixths, which creates a more old school ragtime type sound. So we're starting here at the eighth fret on the G and the high E play those two notes together and just make sure the B string in between is muted. So eighth fret, slide up to the ninth, back to the eighth, down to the seventh, and then it's gonna be six on the G with five on the high E. So eight, slide to nine, eight, seven, six and five. So now let's hear these double stops in context with the track. Technique number nine is what I call the major to minor reach out, where we play a lick from the major scale and then reach out to notes from the minor scale to act as our blue notes. So we've got this major pentatonic box here. 5-7 on the B and 5-7 on the high E. But this sounds really bright. So what we can do is reach out to the eighth fret where we find some notes from the minor scale that we can use as darker sounding blue notes. So the lick I'm playing here sounds like this. So I start with this bend up 
And then land, seventh fret of the high E, which is a B note, which fits perfectly over the E chord our progression's now on. And then it's this major sounding lick. And then reach out to this note of the eighth fret, which then suddenly brings in this blues flavor. On to technique 10, which is the double stop blues scale. So all I'm doing here is playing down a version of the minor blues scale, but playing every note as a double stop with the string below. So let's start here, eighth fret on the B and high E strings, and then down to seven, and down to five. Now same again on the G and B strings, eight, seven, five. So we've got, and then back to seven on the G and B strings. And now what I'm gonna do, play them and then a quick up to eight and back again, and then down to five, and then land here, seventh fret of the D string, our root note, and then I'm just ending with this little minor to major hammer on on the G and B strings, and then back to the root note of A. Number 11 is a classic blues turnaround. So what I'm doing here is playing down in thirds, starting here at the ninth fret of the G string, together with the eighth fret of the B string. So I'm playing G string, B string, G string, then down a fret, G, B, G, down another fret, G, B, G, for that chromatic movement. And then back to this classic technique, so bar, fifth fret on the G and B strings, and then hammer on, sixth fret on the G string, and then seventh on the D, four on the D, and then into this E7 add nine chord. It's the same chord as we looked at earlier when we were doing the chromatic chord progression. So all together. So finally, number 12 for everyone that made it this far. So when you're ending your blues, you don't just want to end on a plain old boring chord like that. You want something with a bit of suspense in it. So what we're going to do here is use the same kind of chromatic movement as we used earlier and go from B flat seven down to A major seven. So the B flat seven, we're playing like this. First finger, sixth fret of the low E. Second finger, sixth fret of the D. Third finger, seventh fret of the G string. So this really just spells out B flat seven, and then the little finger is gonna bar at the eighth fret on the top two strings. And these are a G and a C, which is like our 13th and the ninth of the chord, which adds the kind of bit of sophistication or ponciness as you could call it, but makes it sound really nice. And then what we wanna do, move all that down one fret, but this second finger, keep that on the sixth fret. And then this becomes an A major seven, again, with this 13th and ninth on top. So that's the full piece. Let's go back to the track and hear everything in action. <laughs> 